All the Star Wars movies right here, right now. Let's talk about it. What are my favorites? What are my least favorites? Why and why not? We would be honored if you would join us. Let's go into it. So this is a question that I've had asked to me many times over the last about three, three and a half years that uh, I've been on YouTube. And I've never made a video regarding this because, first of all, we haven't finished the Skywalker saga. And second of all, well, there really is no second of all. I'm just kind of procrastinating it. But let's get to it today. So now that Episode Nine is out, I'm going to rank all of the movies, my opinion, my personal favorites, to my least favorites. Okay? I'm going to do the top ones first, going down in hierarchical order, to the least favorite last. And... I'll also incorporate all of the Disney movies as well, not just the Sky, because they all, they're all included, let's say. Let's just throw them in there. Um, or I can actually leave them out. Maybe we'll do two, two different ones. Okay, so the, the first ones will be only the Skywalker Saga, okay? And then the second, I'll throw in the, uh, the spin-off films, like Rogue One or whatever, but I know that's not really like a main question for people. So, starting with number one, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. I'm a big prequels guy. I was introduced to Star Wars when I was six years old by my dad, and that was in 1996 when it was still the original. So I grew up with, you know, the first three. I mean, well, the four, five, six, the first original three. And then once the prequels came out, that was my time to kind of enjoy them in theaters and go to the movies and speculate and have my own little theories as a kid and all that stuff. And and when Anakin was uh, in episode one, at age nine, I was age nine. So it was cool. I could, like kind of connect with him like that. So it, it was just a little more um, connective, really. So episode three is my number one because it is, first reason, it's one of the most dark. And in movies in general, not just in Star Wars, I feel like we get a lot of good guys fight the bad guys and then the heroes win. It's always a happy ending. This one, they didn't win. The bad guys won. And I don't want to say like, oh, I love it when bad guys win, but... It's different, and it's almost more realistic because life isn't always perfect. It isn't always how you want it to be, and it doesn't end uh, with the favor of the good guys, of the good. There's going to be a lot of you know yin and yang, and this movie showed that. It showed a beautiful, massive arc to Anakin's character from the previous two films, and then the originals as well, showing you know how he led up to that moment. It was just great from everything from showing Anakin's small little taps into the dark side like when he was fighting Dooku you could see when he was using the light and then Dooku said you know you have hate you have anger but you don't use them and then he finally started using the dark side and that's really when his power just blew up and he killed Dooku right um also to make a little other video one day uh Dooku was toying with him right he was told to toy with him by Sidious so that that's I don't want to go into details about lore and stuff like that very much but um, that's that. And then we get, you know, Order 66, Anakin's arc, his fall, everything. It was beautiful. I loved it. The next one after that is Episode 5. Now, this is a movie I used to watch all the time with my dad. And um, it just has a very nostalgic, nostalgic feel for me. You know, it's just very cozy. It's like, it just reminds me. When I think of that movie, I remember that scene where it shows the outside of Yoda's hut and it's all like raining on Dagobah and then you go to the next scene where Luke and Yoda are inside and they have the fire and everything and it's just very, it's a, it's, it's a cool scene, you know, Luke's very distraught, he's trying to find Yoda, he's very impatient, which is a problem that I really have, I'm very impatient in life and he's forced to be patient when Yoda says, you know, he is not ready, I cannot train him to Obi-Wan through the force. And the whole movie was just great. You know, it, it showed so much of Luke getting his butt kicked. And I think that is so darn relatable to life where you don't always win. You're not always going to win, right? And I love that. You know, he trains and he still goes and he fights his father, Darth Vader, and he loses still. Gets his butt handed to him. Goes back to Leia and, you know, then we go into episode six. And it's Again, very relatable to life, that no matter how hard you train, there's always someone that's going to be better than you. No matter what you do, you always have to be prepared for more. And you may not always win. Even though your intentions might be good, you may not always win. And I like that. It shows you that you need to work hard, you need to train. And that's really what that movie taught me as a little kid, that 
not everything's going to be, you know, given to you just because, you know, you do a little bit of work. I liked it. And it shows a great arc for his character as well. Um, and it builds the story for Han and Leia's romance, that's for sure. You know, a lot of, like, fighting and this and that. That was interesting. Also, because I used to play Shadows of the Empire a lot, and there was a lot of Hoth scenes in that. And I remember that, you know, with the... Uh... Anyways, uh, we're, get, we're getting off track. Um, the next one after that, I would... It's a big tie between episode six and episode... Now we're going to have to go episode six. So we got three, five, six. Episode six is the final conclusion. My favorite movie in all of movie history, I would have to say, is the ending scene uh, in Return of the Jedi, where Luke walks, takes a right, and looks out to the trees and sees his father, Obi-Wan, and Yoda as a Force ghost. And when they put Hayden Christensen in there, I remember when I bought the, uh, the revised DVD edition, because uh, I had the VHS before that. And this was after, obviously, Revenge of the Sith came out. And I was a huge Anakin fan. And they put Hayden Christensen in there. Teary-eyed. Big surprise, right? I remember that. I was just so happy because it connected the prequels with the originals. And it was so amazing. So there's that. Um, beautiful, beautiful movie for Luke's arc, Vader's arc, Anakin's arc, and even Palpatine's. It showed a lot of connectivity with species that you may not understand, and I think that's also relatable to life, such as the Ewoks helping the humans, helping the rebels. And I thought, you know, having that that um, separation between languages, is the barrier between languages really doesn't change when you're fighting for the same cause. And it doesn't, it doesn't make anything different between the two, even though you're completely two different species when you're fighting for the same cause. And I enjoyed that. I liked that, you know. To two entities coming together to fight the evil. That was great. Um, and, of course, for Luke's arc, you know, he, he, the most heroic thing he did was not fighting after fighting. After fighting Vader and almost turning to the dark side, he saw what he was about to become, and he threw his lightsaber away, and he put his life on the line for his father. He said, well, father, if you're not going to turn back into Anakin Skywalker to use the light that's good in you still, then I'm going to kill myself. He's willing to die. He's willing to put the rebellion on the line, his friends' lives on the line, everything, the galaxy, all of it, the last Jedi, every, he was, the, he was at that point. Well, he didn't know, you know, well, he knew that Leia was, but he wouldn't be able to train her. So really, that was it. Yoda was dead. And then, of course, Vader changes who he is. Anakin breaks through and... Sidious is thrown over the railing and dies. I thought that was beautiful. Okay. Sacrifice. And then, of course, Vader goes off and he dies. He says, you know, take my mask off so I can see you with my own eyes. And he does. And it's just a very beautiful scene, very touching scene. And I don't think anything can be recreated like that in cinema history again. You know, it's, it was just so iconic. I wonder what it was like for the original trilogy fans who um, got to see it in theaters for the first time, you know. Must have been really interesting. Must have been really nice. After that, we go to episode one. Episode one for me is extremely special because I was obsessed with Darth Maul. Like, I bought his staff saber, like the the really crappy plastic one as a kid, and I bought his costume, his Halloween costume, dressed up as him for Halloween. I practiced with that thing so many times, and I'm still pretty good with it to this day with a bow, bow staff. It was a great film. I loved it. Um, I thought Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan and, and, and Anakin were just very good together. Um, Qui-Gon is, to this day, one of my favorite characters after Anakin, I would have to say. I just love how he doesn't... He's just not so rigid like the other Jedi, you know? And this is why he wasn't on the Council, is because he followed the Force. He did his own thing, kind of. He was a little bit rogue, you know? The the whole thing with the, with the, with the dice... You know, changing the dice, making sure that it was in his favor with Watto. I think all of that was just so beautifully done. And it was refreshing to see a Jedi that wasn't so just dogmatic, like Palpatine said. Um, also, the way he died in the end. Um, obviously, we've seen worse deaths in Star Wars and they've survived, but we can go into that in another video. But his death needed to be done. And when he died, he passed on all he knew to Obi-Wan 
and he told Obi-Wan to train the boy. So it really started with Qui-Gon. This entire Star Wars started with Qui-Gon. If that ship didn't break down and they didn't go to Tatooine, there would be no Star Wars. There'd be no Anakin, nothing. So there's that. Episode 4. It's between Episode 4 and Episode 2. Episode 2 for me was really special because... I just remember going to the theater as a kid. I remember, you know, connecting with Anakin. And um, I would say after the Return of the Jedi scene at the end there, my second most favorite in all of movie history would have to be when Anakin blasts off on his speeder and goes to save his mother. That is, I would even say that's maybe even cooler than than the Return of the Jedi. They, they both give you different feels. And it was just so goddamn cool to see that. It really was. He just, like, this was the first time he ever went into the dark side, in canon at least, and it was just really cool to see, and I think Hayden Christensen did an absolutely perfect job of portraying that. Of course, his mother dies, turns to the dark side, slaughters all the sand people, and then, you know, goes on to kind of cry about it because what if just he just did. This is so against the Jedi Code, so against his way, but he unleash that hatred for the first time and it's something that Qui-Gon felt into the netherworld of the force and I thought that was really interesting as well and Yoda felt it so there was all that real real cool stuff in that also again Anakin even through his rage and everything gets his butt kicked to Dooku but he was cool and it showed that he could last longer than Obi-Wan even though he was just a Padawan and the whole like double saber thing I still remember the trailers for that and I was like so excited I thought it was so cool and, and Yoda showing up right uh, Battle of Genosis was really cool. Uh, that was another movie that I watched a lot. So I would have to say, then we go episode two. Then we go episode four. So we've got three, five, six, one, two, four. Episode four, I mean, it's classic, right? It's the first one. Um, but in correlation with the other ones, it's beautiful, but it's not as action-packed, I would say, right? Like episode four and episode five, totally different. Luke's a farm farm boy it's the the story i would say is probably the most beautiful because he's a farm boy he doesn't know where he belongs and then he he's looking out in the twin sons and by the way that's apparently george lucas's favorite scene in all of star wars because it reminds him of him where he was looking out to the sun and wondering where his next adventure is going to be i read that in a, a a comic one of the comics and one of the canon comics i think and he goes on, you know, he finds this wizard and then he goes to become this hero of the rebellion and learns the subtleties of the force. And then through that expands and grows and everything and then, you know, becomes who he becomes. So now we're done with the first six. Now let's go into the sequels. Episode nine. Beautiful. I loved it. For, for what we got, after The Last Jedi. If I could go back and redo the sequels, of course I would. I would have Luke, Leia, Han all together in, you know, some emotional scenes. Um, you know, the band back together again. And I would have Kylo not lose so much. I would have Rey not be so powerful off the get-go and show her training and all this stuff, even though, you know, she is who she is. No spoilers in this. And, yeah, I would do things much differently. Luke in The Last Jedi would have been a much more powerful. Um, he would have shown who he was. You know, he maybe would have been uh, how we saw him in the beginning of the film, you know, how he, like, gave up and he was afraid. But then he would have gone on with Rey, and he would have been like, okay, you know what? I see my mistakes. I see how I shouldn't have been here like a like a hermit, like he says in Episode Nine, And he goes on to redeem himself, and I think that would have been awesome. We didn't have to wait till Episode Nine to see that redemption that he realized he was wrong and afraid. So I think that would have been cool. So, for the sequels, 9, definitely, and then 7, and 8. I really, you know, I really want to like 8, but I just don't. That's the unfortunate part. 7, for me, was, uh, it was really like all of the originals put into one movie, but with different characters, with younger characters. It was really, you know, the, the first part of the episode 7 was really like episode 4. You know, you got Ray, the scavenger in the desert, doesn't know who she is, where she belongs. Then you've got, you know, the second part, which is, you know, kind of like Hoth and all that stuff. And it's like, it was cool, you know. Um, then the third, of course, is kind of like the end of the film where um, Ray beats the evil one and Kylo. And then and that's that. 
So it was fun, but it was a good movie. Um, and episode eight would be last for me because I just, Luke was a character for me growing up. And I just don't like to see my heroes stay in the slump like that. And I know a lot of people might be like, you know, saying, like, well, no, he um, freed the, the, he gave hope to the rebellion, to the, what is it, the resistance. And he changed a lot of lives because of that. And I'm like, well, he could have shown up, you know. And at the end, and there just him dying was just like, he's so powerful. You know, I, I, the way he was written, just, it didn't speak to me. And if it speaks to you, that's great. But I didn't like it. So it would have to go dead last for me, even after all of the spinoff films. Um, yeah. So now if we're going to put spinoff films in there, so we've got, okay, we got three, nothing touches the original trilogy for me. So we've got three, five, six, one, two, four. Then we've got Rogue One. Then we've got Solo. I thought Solo was great. I mean, it's a, it's a movie about Han Solo. Like, I'm not that unbelievably attached to him like I am to Luke, right? So it's not as sensitive a matter. But I feel like it was a great movie. It was entertaining. I feel like the actor, Alden, was perfectly chosen. He did a great job. And the whole cast just was great. Um, I think it really only got backlash or, or, or kind of tanked in the box office because of the backlash of The Last Jedi because fans weren't too happy. That's really the only reason. So I don't think it should have deserved that. I'm pretty sure if it came out before Episode 8, um, it probably would have done a lot better. But at the end of the day, you all may have your own favorites for Star Wars, and I'd love to hear them down below. So please let me know what you rank all of the movies, you know, in hierarchical order, you know, from the, f the best one, your favorite, to the last one and reasons why just let me know so these are mine i hope you enjoyed this little quick breakdown review and i can go into a breakdown of each movie afterwards um if you so wish but eh, it's up to you so thanks for hanging out guys i'll see you in the next video until then remember the force will be with you